Even if the worst thing happens to you on stage, you will get through it and it won't stop anybody from coming and talking to you. It is a thing that practice makes better. There's no doubt about it. You don't want to make a good impression, you grab people right away. Otherwise, it's just wah, 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 traction. Yeah, I completely agree. I think you shouldn't, I mean, you should worry a little bit about be, having a terrible pitch, just like getting up there and totally blanking, like those things can happen. Uh, but I'd be more worried about being in that giant block of sort of mediocre pitches, because good pitches will really stand out. Um, so yeah, don't be the worst pitch, but the difference between being the worst pitch and a mediocre pitch isn't gonna matter. You, I mean, you're going to win. You know, whether it's in this competition or in raising money, they're not gonna give you good credit for getting like a B plus, right? Like you really gotta nail it. I'd say, I mean, some, again, to lump them in because I don't want to name names. Um, you, oh, the, come on. the worst ones are always, <laughs> and they're subtle things. If you're pitching technology and technology alone, you're gonna be one of the want, want, you know, Charlie Brown pitches. If you're not pitching a solution to a problem and answering a pain, I mean, that's what people want to hear. That's what people relate to. Um, technology is great, but you got to apply that technology. Um, and then little things like little common sense things that you lose in the moment, like don't insult people in your pitch or customers and competitors. It, it doesn't go over well. Don't insult investors. Say investors don't know what they're talking about. You, you laugh, but I see it quite often, and it's very mm -hmm. painful to watch. And um, you should not do that. The worst pitch I ever saw was an entrepreneur who was actually a serial entrepreneur, so it was about his third, fourth company, and he departed from his script, and you could just tell he did it. And so, for whatever reason, instead of talking about the company that he was now launching, he started talking about how awesome he was. And everybody in the audience just went, Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't you. I'm not looking at you for that. <laughs> Warm in here. <laughs> I would say that they have to want you to succeed above all. Remember that they're not investing in you as a venture capitalist, right? Um, they want to see you win because they believe in what you're selling. If it were a venture capitalist, they might be a little more ruthless and say, you know what, this might be a great thing for the world, but this is my money over here. Um, so they have to want you to succeed mm -hmm. and they have to think that you actually can. Um, and I think, I think it's, it's really kind good, of in that point. order compared to other audiences, to your point, know your audience. You made a really good point, which is a lot of times in these pitches, if you're pitching to real investors, there's two things you need to do. You have to give them permission to believe, but you have to activate their greed. They gotta have some hunger for that deal. You don't have to do that with judges. Yeah. Judges aren't in investing real money. Uh, so it is, it is more of that, that first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will say it's not. Because you want the judges to think you're one of the top five teams. So there is something <clears throat> that you want out of this. So the top five teams are at the end of the day, the judges are going to on their, um, well, it's not a sheet, but through the, our website, they're going to go in and they're going to list their top five teams in order. Well, what makes it top? Yeah. It's according to every judge, but we do have a rubric for them. And I think too, you have to be yeah. realistic with the pitch though too, because you have, you have such a short amount of time, you're not going to sell me with the pitch. Your job is to make me want to come talk to you and remember you. And the remembering you is key. There's 22 of you up there. We're here. Most of the judges know each other, so they're all elbowing and networking. Um, I, I will give you a tip. If you don't say your name at least three times, I'm not going to remember your name when I go around to the booth and when I, when I you know, fill out my judging sheet. So catch their interest and make them want more. Make them remember who you are. And, and I'm not saying be gimmicky. Um, I, I'm saying tell that compelling story and win them over in the short amount of time, but you can't tell them everything. So don't try and cram everything in there. What they care about is the name of the person who's presenting. They would love to know if you're an undergrad or a grad and what department you're in uh, or what university you're with. That works too. Um, but they also then want to hear what you've been working on and why you find this thing that you're working on so awesomely compelling, right? 
So you've got to give them a reason to believe and a reason to come and listen to your full demo and pitch. And so the best ones that I have seen over the years usually start with a small story. You know, the reason that we're doing this diagnostic test is because my best friend Terry's mom got Lyme disease, you know, and so there's a little story, right? Why are you working on the thing that you're working on? What is important to you? Um, and then it is this, we believe that this device, this thing will do this and save you lots of time and money and energy and it'll be good for the planet and, you know, you don't want to oversell but at the same time if you show that you believe in what you're working on, they will certainly follow suit and come and hear more. Agreed. And if you, if you, how could I disagree? If you I do that, with you. if you do that for a bit, like at the end of your day of, of a competition, you'll realize there's like five answers, five questions yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that everybody asks you. The sooner you figure those five questions out, the better. So to use your example of, you know, talking about Lyme disease, don't go into a long story. Just say, you know, Lyme disease touched my family, and so it's important to me, and I'm passionate mm -hmm. about this solution. Don't say more than that. The curse of knowledge has, has, has torpedoed more pitches. That used to be my problem. I just, I just knew so much, and I just had to share it with the investor. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it tripped me up all the time. You guys know your stuff. You've got to learn to, you know, tell it, to, tell it in really, really simple format. Mm -hmm. Simple, simple message. And then be com comfortable yourself with that. Be comfortable knowing that they are not at your level of knowledge. The worst format. Not the worst, as in like the worst to assess, but the hardest to give. Mm -hmm. Because um, it is the longest pitch you're expected to memorize. You're never going to get, um, like if you had two minutes, you could get up there and probably ad-lib a compelling story if you know your stuff. Mm -hmm. One minute you can't. Every second is really valuable. So you absolutely have to memorize it. A longer pitch, I think you get a lot more leeway. You can read the room. Mm -hmm. This one you just got a nail. So I'll start by saying a clear voice. I mean, when you stand up on stage, you will have a microphone. A lot of people hold the microphone down here because they're afraid of the microphone. But the microphones we use, you have to hold it up here. And if you don't, people in the audience really can't hear you. So you don't want to be the booming voice, of course. But you want to make sure that people hear you. And what that usually means is you need to speak, not slowly, but our tendency when we're nervous is to speed up. So tell yourself to slow down. Talk at your normal pace as if you were having a conversation with someone and just make sure that you're using language that your mom could understand. Well, I could understand, then, okay, well, let's put it that way. Um, now, if your mom is a physicist, that goes out the window, of course, but at the same time, um, jargon, technology, language sometimes, acronyms go over people's heads. Oh, you don't like acronyms either, okay, thank you. Oh, you do love them? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> uh, then it's up to you if you want to use some of them. Uh, but I would just say you want to be memorable. I'd say, too, I mean, a lot of it's just delivery. So, the reason I ask you who's all terrified, I love the EIC. It's one of my favorite days of the year. I don't know how you guys built it or how it works, it, how you've done it, because it's amazing. There's 300 people, very impressive people in there, coming to see you. Like, you should not be nervous about talking to them, because they are coming to see you and to see you succeed. When you're up on stage, we have no idea what you're, you're going to say, so you could, you know, we don't know if you've loved it or not. Um, it's all about presentation, and so being comfortable that we're here to see you succeed and to come see what you're working on and, and you've already got us impressed um, just that you've made it this far because it's mm -hmm. such a great program. Um, but the one thing I'll say not to, don't let that intimidate you. So there used to be back when TVs were small, um, acting on TV was very small movements, go to small screen, acting on film was very different because big screen you need to be much bigger. You're going to be in a very large room in front of a lot of people on a fairly big stage own that stage, be comfortable, move around, um, 
you know, let your, your voice resonate a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to be kind of staying there and, and your nervousness is going to come across. So even if you have to fake that movement and that comfort, um, you know, feel around it. And, yeah, if and it looks like you're anxious to get out of there, so will your audience. Yep. Uh, in terms of other elements of the pitch, and we kind of touched on this earlier, but um, remember always that you're selling the vision. You're selling what the product does, not what it is. I think particularly with a lot of technical products, and I'm sure some of you have them, and people will spend hours and hours and weeks and months and maybe their entire careers on the technology, the core of what you're, you're pitching, and you almost spend no time on that in your pitch because what matters is what it does in the world. So sell that, and when they come to your booth, and if someone's really knowledgeable on some particular topic, like you know, we were talking about biofuels, Great, you can tell them about all this fascinating guts here, but um, remember, just sell what like you're doing, sell the vision of what the how the world's different, uh, rather than like the, the really cool little details of your tech. One other thing for you all to know is that we give every team time on stage before the judges come. So while you're setting up your display, your booth, um, your prototype, you will be able to get up on stage and that's when you can practice owning that stage. And I'm a big believer in owning the stage. Um, so stand up tall, you know, and just act like you belong there because you do. I love to have other people pitch my pitch. I like, you know, and, and have your friends do it. I love doing this for people. Just give me your pitch, I'll pitch it. Right, and watch them, and and look at them, and and somebody who cares less actually delivers it better. I could probably deliver half the pitches in here, great, but I don't know what they are, and I'm just like, this is fantastic. You know, four or five people are going to benefit from this. When you see other people do that, it gives you permission to be relaxed about it and to be a little bit more just down to earth about it. So, so trade pitches, work together, pitch other people's mm -hmm. stuff, practice pitching things that you you don't uh, have any real connection to. So when we were pitching our stuff, we used to take breaks and we would pitch balloons.com. Because we were like, my god, if only our product was simple. It would be so easy to pitch. And we can <laughs> yeah. run around going, balloons.com is the largest socially connected community on the internet. Why wouldn't you want it? You know, I just, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> it's, it's like vocal exercises. It's like loosening up your instrument. Practice, practice, practice. But not always your stuff. So that's my advice. I would say practice and record yourself, but more importantly, get in front of people. And when you're done, ask them, what did I just pitch you? And, and pay attention to what they feed back to you, because that's what they're hearing. And you'll hear trends of, OK, people are walking away, and this is what they think I'm pitching. That's not my value proposition. I got to get this through. Mm -hmm. uh, so the more people you get through, they, it's almost better that they don't know what they're doing or if they're not engineering or business. You know, Just a fresh set of eyes and ears. And what do you think? What can I do? What did I just pitch you? What did you take away from this? Um, and that's a good way to calibrate what your key messages are, because you may think you're, I mean, by the time you're done this, you, you're going to be kind of blind and deaf to what you're actually pitching, because it's going to be so ingrained in you. So getting a fresh set of, you know, I think I'm saying this, but here's what everyone's hearing, um, it, it's pretty sobering. Yeah, I agree with the videotaping. It's really useful. You never know what you, so I'm an identical twin, so when I see myself on camera, I feel like I'm my brother. Um, which is a weird sort of out of body thing. Oh, there you go. He knows what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, it's, it's different. Like you, you sound different too. Um, so wow. like record, watch it. I had a friend who, different advice, but um, at a big cocktail party was pitching the next day and before he left just stood up on the table in front of you know 40 people, some of whom he knew, most of whom he didn't, and just gave his pitch. And he said it felt amazing. And the next day he was like, because everyone, we're all drunk, so everyone's applauding and like it's a big thing. Um, but like the biggest group you can get in front of, particularly if you don't know them, and just like go. I mean, he said that was the best. I've never tried it personally, but he said that was just the best pitch prep ever. Pitch prep ever. He won the next day, by the way. So it was probably cathartic. And it won. Think. Yeah. I mean, it was like, well, and everyone's like cheer. Like at these things, people, like everyone will clap, but no one's going to be like raucous cheering. But an event like right, that, guys. sure. Yeah. My practice is usually writing out what I want to say, not always word for word, because I'm just not that kind of person. 
uh, but writing out the main points, the bulleted items, the, make, the things I want to make sure that I say. Um, I'll read it through a couple of times. I'll stand up, walk around, say it out loud, and then I will put it away. And then the next morning when I'm driving to work, I will run through the whole thing in the car. And I'm brilliant in the car. <laughs> and a good singer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Um, so it just helps me to just stop and sometimes whatever I'm doing, I can be walking across campus and I am saying whatever it is I have to say in my head. And so I just practice it throughout the day. And I get better and um, at least I like to think that. <laughs>I mean, this is such an amazing event. You guys have come so far. Be proud of what you've done and have fun with it. I mean, we, we're there to have fun, so. Absolutely. And the audience is there because they want to meet you. Mm -hmm. And don't make any mistakes about why people are coming. They're coming for two reasons. They're coming because they believe that college students are inventing the cool stuff, right? Are associated with cool stuff. And they're also coming because you're giving them hope.